Hello everybody and welcome back to this beautiful table which I totally hoovered before we started. Seriously, here's some video of it. Where today we're looking at yet again another camcorder. Don't worry, I'm starting to run out of footage for these simply because Tropical Birdland is shot due to a lockdown. Yay, there's my thumb. Look at it. Isn't it pretty? Anyway, today we are looking at this monstrosity. Look, it's a JVC, which I believe is the Japanese Victor Company, or the Victor Company of Japan, whichever way you want to look at it. Yes, yeah, so we're looking at a JCV. The actual camera's in here. Um, two separate boxes. I'm pretty sure this is the original box it came in, which is a bit blank and interesting, but uh, we'll actually look at the camera first, which I keep in here, and it's got its own carrying case, which should tell you how much I think about this camera. Because today, ladies and gentlemen, if you are illiterate and cannot read the description, we are looking at the JCV GRDV1, as seen on Techmoan some time ago. Now, all I'm going to do is quickly lift this up a little bit, because, geez, I haven't got any room. But yes, it's a camcorder. It's made by JCV. It's got a hundred times digital zoom apparently, and a snapshot button. And it's quite small uh, in comparison to other cameras. It's genuinely quite small. I have no experience of using this at the time because this particular model was released in 1996. I was about to say 1999, but now it was released in 1996 for the grand old price of 3,000 US dollars. Mm. It's an expensive camera. But let's have a look at what else we've got here. I'm just going to put it over there. We've got uh, a charging thing. We've got its battery, which we'll talk about a little bit later. A cleaning head, because why not? A remote that I don't actually think is for this camcorder and I cannot get to work. And a set of instructions, which I have actually read quite a bit of because I use this camera a fair bit. And in this other box, which we can identify the last time the camera was potentially used as 2006 due to the release of the movie Cars, there's some random information for you. We've got other bits and pieces. Like in this box, for example, we have a pen, a cable, and a replacement battery. That doesn't work. I'll explain that in a minute. And in this box, we've got a stand for the thing, which you put in as thus. So you can project it into your TV using the AV cables that it's provided with, which I'll show you later. It's actually a really good camera. Uh, although why you'd use those AV cables with this piece of tech, I don't know. Because here we have a dock. A dock with its own fan. And uh, a DC power input that requires the battery charger to work. Uh, this unit is incredibly useful. In fact, this is how I pull all of my uh, versions of this kind of tape. Because all you do is basically stick it in there and lock it. And now it is completely locked. Uh, you can take a tape out and put a new one in. Uh, and you just use the AV out here into your computer. And it's great. So this is actually a really, really useful uh, thing. Uh, the docking station CU V708E. Mmm, delicious. But yes, yeah, so docking station, very useful. Uh, very, very useful. And the last box that we have to look at just has some other stuff in it. I don't actually know what half this stuff is. Uh, random tissue, empty box, power cables, and mini jack things. But they're not what we're looking at today. Those are all the accessories, but we want to look at the camera itself. And it's uh, it's quite a dainty unit for 1996, bearing in mind that uh, cameras like the um, Panasonic M10 or the um, GRC7, the Ferguson FC25, the Panasonic VM or the NV were all still in common use. This is something completely different. It is a completely different look at uh, camcorders as such, and seems to follow the vein of holding a handle to hold a camcorder like the VK C600, which, as you know, I'm quite fond of. But yes, let's uh, let's wait no further time. We'll get into the meat of the camera. Battery goes in here as this. It's got a lovely little hour to indicate and shut. I think there's enough charge in there. This is a replacement battery I brought. It is too large to fit in. I have not pushed it in all the way because I fear it will not come out. It's thoroughly disappointing because it's the first time that Cameroon Sino has let me down. 
Mm. However, somehow, despite being 24 years old, unless it is a replacement battery, which it might be. I mean, it certainly kind of looks like it's a replacement battery. Yeah, yeah, replace. Yeah, it's a replacement battery. But the fact that it still works after even, let's say, 2006 or 14 years is pretty impressive. But that's enough uh, blabbing about that. Oh, incidentally, this format takes mini DV, which are these very small tapes. The we're honestly the last of the tape-based camcorder format before we moved into uh, mini DVDs and uh, hard drives, of which my first camcorder was a hard drive-based one. And that'll be our test tape for this video, because mm, I don't think there's anything important on it. I hope there's not. But yes, the camera. So we've got it in. To turn the camera on, you've got a play and a record function here, which you can skip around. You can see the little LED turns on. You've also got five seconds, which I believe is your timer shot, and more timer shots. They're not particularly important. And on the second knob, you've got your settings. So you've got your auto, where the camera does everything. You've got your focus, where it focuses. You've got your experience, where you level up. Or obviously, that's exposure. You've got your white balance, because everybody needs to set their own white balance. And you've got your pro settings. And I've got a, few, I've got a little complaint about this, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. We'll just go over the, the looks of the camera for now. To reveal the controls for the camera itself, you know, forward and rewind, they're behind this slot here. It's nice and compact. And to turn the camera on, all you do is pull this. And by pulling this, you open the lens. Look, we can... Shut the lens, open the lens, shut the lens, open the lens. I'm sure this is like a nice aluminium finish as well. And mind you, it might just be plastic, but it looks really nice, especially the front there. Look at JCV digital zoom, snapshot, wee. So let's say we want to record, we slip this to record, and then everything turns on. It tells us that we've got no tape in here, and it tells us that we've got a battery. Now, if I bring the viewfinder here, you can see directly through it, it's screaming that it needs a tape. Um... There is a focusing thing on here, but you can't actually lift it up like some of them. But as you can see, the viewfinder through there, what you can see is actually pretty good. And I have found it is a very good viewfinder. Of course, we want to put tape in it. So we hit this button. Let me just put autofocus back on. We'll focus on here. Hit this button and lift this up. And the whole mechanism comes out. Because, of course, the mechanisms of these devices are normally where most of the space goes. Of course, it lifts up. And you put your lovely tape in. And then you just push down like that. And it takes everything back. And I could reach in there and completely destroy the camcorder in only a few short seconds, I'm sure. I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to skip it over to play and see if there's anything interesting on this tape. I don't think there is. So we're going to uh, just hit rewind first. Oh, did I hit play? I don't know what I did. You get to look at this tape side on. Just hit play. Now, you can see those lines going through there whilst there's something going on. That is a problem with this particular tape. I brought a job load of 15 tapes, and 13 of them suffered this corruption issue, which I don't know exactly what it is, but unfortunately it rendered a lot of the tapes completely useless, which is a real shame because some of them look like they were old concerts. Oh, wait, no, that's just G-Shep. Hmm. Oh, that's the TCR video. Well, then. Either way, this tape is kind of useless, but hey-ho. But if I bring this back here, you can see we've got a count of how long it's been recording. You can see that we're running out of battery already, which is great. I didn't charge it before this very naughty. Forward and backward sliders. And the snapshot button, which will take a five-second snapshot whilst relaying the audio you make over it whilst recording. At the front as well, we have... Focus. The microphone port, an AV out, and a DC 6 volt in, which I could be using, but I'm not. Hmm, aren't I clever? And that's about it. On this side, you've got, um, I'm not really showing this, you know, don't look at the sun, it gets hot, it's not a malfunction. Digital, yes, this was the first technically digital signal camera. First. Uh, we've got the Austrian flag for some reason, because Austrians, yay. And all your standard things. And do not force this cover open. It may break the unit. This has something to do with the um, docking unit, I'm sure. Hmm. I don't really think there's much else to talk about in relation to the front side of the camera. Because we, we've talked about just the size of the camera in general. I have my little gripe here, which is uh, to set any kind of transitions, which I'll show you. Uh, and the also the uh, I'm pretty sure it's got camera stabilization, but it only works in pro. You have to be in pro mode, which can screw up the focus and such. So I tend to find myself 
setting the scene with auto and then moving the bar over to pro to actually put the transitions and everything else in, which means you couldn't really move around with it. But um, what are you going to do? Anyway, let's have a look at this footage from a camera from 1999 of birds and we'll see how things go. Hello. Oh. Oh dear. Picked a real day for this today. A real day. Hello. Would you like a nut? Yeah. There you go. That's all for you, Daddy. Yes. Yes, it is. I like how you dropped it there. That's very resourceful. Hi. Hello. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Here you go. What about you? Do you want one? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> You're going to put some effort in? No? Is, is, there, is there no effort here today? Is there no, no effort? No, there is no effort today. Hello. It's raining a lot. Yes. It's raining, isn't it? You're sheltered. I'm not. Oh, it's all going down with... Uh, the things I do. You don't like nuts, do you?
Oh, you. You want one. Say hello. You say hello. You can't have that, but you can have this. There you go. Oh. Would you like one of these? Hello there. <laughs> Hello. Oh, you're in a bad mood today. How you doing? Oh, it's the hat. Oh. You're in a bad mood today. Why are we in a bad mood today? Yeah. Hello. Oh, it's very wet, isn't it? It's very wet. So wet. Empty. Oh no. Oh no. What are you doing? What are you doing? Ah, there you go. That's one way to do it. Now, are you going to do what you do every single time? What the hell are you not? Hello. 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 Hello.
Let's come around this side. Oh! Oh, where are you going? Where are you going? Hello. Hello. I want to get Hugo, but he's all the way up there on the high branch. The black one. No, I've got nothing left for you. Well, if you ask me, that was excellent footage. It was actually taken over the course of two days, because um, obviously I've had plenty of visits there. Um, lots of rain on one day and no rain on the other day. Mm, but it ran out of battery before I could get any good footage of uh, the uh, the handling area the first time around. So what are you going to do? Because the battery only lasts about 35 minutes whilst it's running, but it's an old battery. But anyway, yes, looking at that footage, um, it's good. It's very good. This camera, uh, despite being 24 years old, is still very capable of putting out a good picture. Uh, a surprisingly good picture that I am still quite pleased to use. I've used this camera at various different events, uh, and I just use it in general. I've used it out in day-to-day -day activity. Uh, at the start of the lockdown in March, I was using it just for the hell of it, just to record some of the... Uh, really quiet areas though I think all that footage is lost now but in general it's a very good camera and I'm genuinely pleased I bought it for 40 quid some time ago uh we last year now and it's a very very good camera it was an excellent entry into the JCV line or oh, they normally do make good entries uh, and as a mini DV PAL format mini DV first digital camera it really set the bar very high uh, of which many other cameras followed over I don't have many DV cameras uh, unfortunately oh yeah it's got the screw for affixing to tripods i haven't got many dv cameras to be fair i've got um, a professional one which i might review but i've got to get permission to take it to tropical birdland because of how professional it is uh, and i've actually got the one that we used to use as a family uh, in the 2000s and 2005 so i've got that as well to review but other than that Oh, I've got a couple of others i've got a few mini dvs but it's not a format i particularly looked into but this one that's the first one goes with me to almost every event when I'm planning to take a camcorder. If only because I can stick it on my belt loop and completely ignore it. Anyway, having looked at the JCV GR3V1, I do hope you rather enjoyed this video. If you like the content you see, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell me what you think. Tell me about if you had any experience with this cameras on your own camcorders. And I will see you next week, where we won't be looking at a camcorder, but we will the week after. Probably, unless I forget to film it, because I am a big dumb. Woo! Bye, everybody.